Your Excellencies, dear members and constituents of the World Economic Forum, good afternoon. We are coming to the end of our meeting and the final session will be divided into two parts. The first part will be a great opportunity to have a discussion with the President of the Philippines, His Excellency Benigno Aquino, and the President of the Union of Myanmar, U Tensen. And in the second part, we will have the reactions of our co-chairs. We will start um, this first part with a short speech of uh, President Aquino. Uh, first, Mr. President, I, I want to tell you um, how uh, interested the audience and the business leadership is in your country, demonstrated by the great attendance at the luncheon which you offered uh, to the participants. I had an op uh, hon the honor and pleasure to introduce you already on that occasion. I want to make it very short, and I was thinking, how could I introduce you in one sentence, having followed uh, the history and uh, the last years of um, the Philippines um, um, very intensively. I would say you are the president who made the Philippines again proud of their country. President Aquino, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor, Professor Schaub. His Excellency, President Yu Tenshin. Let me begin by congratulating Myanmar for successfully hosting this year's World Economic Forum on East Asia. My delegation and I have thoroughly enjoyed our stay here, short and very short though it may be, and it has been a pleasure to witness a new chapter unfolding in Myanmar's history, in which all sectors and groups can participate in improving people's lives. We are encouraged by the notable steps being taken to achieve greater political and economic openness in Myanmar. The dialogues that we must partake in as regards development are long and complex. And I, like most of you, I'm grateful for the opportunity to gather here, share our experiences, and most importantly, learn from the experiences of others. Truly, this is as good an environment as any to come together and flesh out solutions to the challenges that confront the world today. As Professor Schwab has mentioned, the Philippines will be hosting the WEF on East Asia next year in Manila. We are hopeful that we can match the standards set in by Myanmar and duplicate their success. In the spirit of enhancing our collective pool of knowledge, perhaps you will allow me to share a short version of what is going on in our country, how we have chosen to address the issue of development. As some of you may know, our administration was voted into office largely because of a vision that resonated with my countrymen. In Filipino, we said, Kung walang korup, walang mahirap, which translates to, if there is no corruption, there will be no poverty. This is the overarching philosophy that has guided our reforms, our policies, and our social and economic resurgence. And it is in line with this philosophy that we are fostering a business environment in our country that is highly conducive to broad-based growth. Much of what we have done to attract businesses is based on the belief that a sense of justice, of the predictability of outcomes, breeds confidence, which in turn begets prosperity. A level playing field assures potential investors that the foundations for success in the Philippines are new ideas and hard work, as opposed to a direct line to some crooked government official. As more investors find it appealing to set up shop in our shores, more jobs get created, empowering our consumer base, which attracts even more investments and ensures that the cycle of growth and prosperity continues. This is the sim simple recipe behind the Philippine revival, and we are excited to discuss it more thoroughly with all of you next year, especially since we are accelerating our agenda of social inclusiveness and equitable progress. I am certain that we can learn much from your experiences in this regard. Thus, I am inviting all of you to visit the Philippines to see with your own eyes the transformation that has taken place. I am certain that it will be a memorable experience, especially if you can set aside some time 
to explore a few of our renowned tourist destinations and see that it is really more fun in the Philippines. For now, I suppose it is back to work for all of us. Rest assured, I, along with the members of my cabinet, will be at our desks finding even more ways to accelerate our reform efforts so that we can surprise you even more during your visit next year. It has been a productive few days for a lot of us, and I'm hopeful that we, or that as we all depart this beautiful country, the lessons we have shared and learned will endure, and that we can all look forward to following through on the commitments we have made towards building a stronger, more cooperative, and more inclusive world economy. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, President Aquino. We all are looking forward to being in your country next year, and I want to express my appreciation also for the strong presence of your cabinet already here in uh, uh, Myanmar. And um, I also have to say we are uh, privileged to have had a very strong relationship with the business community, with some members of the business community as loyal supporters of the forum since many years. Now, Mr. President, we are at the end and um, I first want to thank you again for the great hospitality which uh, we all have um, benefited from here in uh, Myanmar. It was a great event and I particularly want to thank you, by the way, for the wonderful evening yesterday, which showed us also parts of uh, Myanmar's uh, culture. We are coming now on the, at, to the end, and please allow me to ask you maybe some more personal questions. Um, Myanmar's spring, if I may call it in such a way, has become an inspiring story for, um, for many of us here. Um, and many of us also are very curious and ask ourselves the questions, uh, why you and your government uh, two years ago, relatively short time ago, initiated uh, these reforms? What, what was really driving you? to start this courageous step to initiate reforms. <clears throat> uh, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. the Executive Director. The, uh, the reforms process with, that we have taken, in fact, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, the response to the arch of the people. Our peoples are uh, the need uh, the, this kind of the reforms and changes this kind of uh, the, the, based on this, uh, the requirements that uh, the, uh, the, we have to end uh, the, the armed conflicts which uh, had ridden the country for the last 60 years and also the, to, to transform the uh, from the military rules to the civilian rules these are the, our desires to transform and also from the central country economies towards the uh, free uh, the market uh, uh, oriented economies. These are the reforms that we will like to. Uh, uh, all these reforms we are undertaking is in fact a response to the desire of the people. This is because uh, people are very desirous and enthusiastic for these reforms. And in fact, we have taken undertaking these reforms to, to, in response to their desire. As you mentioned, it is uh, only two years of our government to uh, assume the office, and we try our single effort. We spend no single efforts to uh, to take these reforms. Uh, Very often, those reforms are easier said than done. Um, we are glad that mm -hmm. you have started those reforms and you have a certain framework for your reforms, but. Uh, I would like to know more how you will really implement those reforms. What are the stages of the reforms? Um, and at the end, what tangible and sustained benefits 
will you bring to your people? You, you said it was just a desire of the people who, which motivated you to undertake the reforms. Now, if you respond to the desires of the people, how will you integrate the, reform, the people into the reform process? Because uh, inclusiveness, I think, is a key word for the success of the reforms. As you have uh, asked, uh, the, the reforms process, we, uh, when we're taken, we have uh, faced with this, a number of the, the difficulties and challenges. And this certain, uh, we, uh, we have to take uh, the initiatives on the certain uh, important, uh, the difficult issues. For instance, the, the stability, peace and stability desired by the people, and that to ensure the uh, peace and stability the march in the country, uh, then we have to uh, tackle two parts. The first part is uh, you can, uh, the political uh, re the, uh, factor that when we are taking the political reforms, we have to ensure our inclusive political process. And we have, uh, this is also uh, the, the one of the areas that the, to grant uh, the amnesties uh, to, be, to prisoners who have been uh, de detained for the last several reasons. Uh, the, we are granted the amnesty to these people. It is because we aim them to be part of our political process. Then to some of them who have released, uh, now they have started their uh, own political parties and are uh, taking the preparations to take part in the full coming general elections. The most, uh, the more difficult part, when our government assumed the offices, there was uh, the, uh, uh, the arms group, which uh, uh, they were the, all together, 11 armed groups. If you look at some other countries, when they are doing for their peace talks, they have to deal with the one or two particular groups. Uh, our case, we have altogether 11 armed uh, groups, and also we have only very short time frames. It is uh, the negotiation process is very, very uh, risky, and also uh, the fit posing, uh, posing very uh, the, uh, numerous challenges. Nonetheless, within the two years frame, uh, the time frame. We have uh, the reach of uh, the agreements with these people, the groups, and uh, today uh, the the uh, the Myanmar, which had uh, the experience of the armed conflicts for the last 60 years, now enjoying the armed conflicts on, on the, almost every part of the country. Thus, the the ceasefire, in fact, I, I can cannot assure the the lasting peace in the country. That is. Uh, in this regard, uh, it may take times and also political the aspects, uh, we have to continue. And then to as regard the people's uh, desires and the uh, now to as uh, the all the, the these uh, the border areas now enjoying the ceasefire and then uh, we have to do the area, the sectors like uh, the livelihood, creation of livelihood in this, they are benefiting from this uh, kind of uh, the, the uh, livelihood. And also, as you all aware, uh, the, our countries has been suffering from the all forms of the economic sanction for the last 20 years. These, uh, the, they were still, the impact of the, this kind of uh, economic sanctions are uh, the felt by the majority of the people. Uh, the, 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 um, about 70% of our population that resides in the rural areas and uh, who are also living under the poverty line. The, uh, the, uh, so that we have to uh, ensure the, uh, the economic growth. The, uh, when we in our endeavors for the ensuring the investor, we have to do, address the poverty, the the poverty reduction rather than the the, the prosperity of the country. So the in consideration the response, and the we have to the, we carry out implementation of the real development and poverty alleviation to the activities. And then uh, this is uh, the uh, to provide uh, the. The financial, uh, the capitalists to those who are lacking these financial were also introduced uh, the microfinance programs to uh, the uh, to the uh, uh, the poor, the uh, farmers, and also the uh, uh, who engage in the uh, the uh, activities, so that they can also enjoy the certain benefits. In fact, uh, the some uh, the uh, who engage in the uh, the uh, odd jobs, for instance, the uh, those who are the higher drivers. They, they they have to spend uh, their money to return it to the owner. Uh, the, the, from the money they have uh, the such for the whole day. 
then the only fees uh, this is so the everything the the search have to spend for the owner fees today we have uh, the uh, created the, uh, the established uh, the corporate systems through which we also the uh, uh, is the the land loans to these people so within one year these are the the high drivers they now they can also the, the lead towards uh, the ownership. And in similar, similar manners, we are also creating this kind of initiatives for the, those that sewing, uh, the people who are engaged in the sewing machines. So the main point is uh, that we have please focus on the poverty reduction rather than the uh, pro bringing prosperity to the country. Now, they, uh, as a result, uh, they have enjoyed the benefits from these activities. For economic uh, development, that we have advantages as well as the, we have uh, requirements. The advantages uh, we have is that uh, the, the our countries in the geographical positions and also this is located between the, the most populous country and also the positions is uh, act as the bridge between the South and Southeast Asia. Is uh, our the population of our neighboring countries is more than two billion. That is a, a the poses a very huge potential market. And uh, also we have uh, the uh, we are rich in the uh, natural resources. We have uh, forests. Uh, also we have uh, the livestock breedings. We also to have the mineral resources and also our plantations. As so onshore and offshore, the gas, natural gas, and the oil and uh, the Blocks. These are the our uh, the, fund, uh, the foundations for our endeavors for the economic growth. However, but we cannot rely on all our natural resources, and uh, we have uh, the uh, sufficient, uh, the sizable the labor force. Our population is more than 60 million because of the insufficient uh, the uh, employment opportunities. About 3 million Myanmar peoples are seeking uh, job opportunities uh, abroad. It is in fact because we do not have a sufficient uh, job right here in Myanmar. So if, the, if we can create the sufficient job opportunities and also as, through the establishment of the factories, they can also, we have a sizable workforce. These are the advantages uh, we have. And while we are enjoying these, uh, the advantages, we have uh, the uh, weaknesses uh, the uh, requirements for we can see that the first is uh, the the capital is uh, the requirement, and also the second part is uh, the advanced technologies, which in fact uh, the because of the due to the economic uh, the sanctions we uh, our technology is lagging behind, and then also our the endeavors for the human resources diplomacy in the very initial stage. This that is a reason. To, uh, to uh, acquire the capitals and also the, techno uh, the advanced technology, we look forward to the foreign investments. Today we are inviting foreign investments. If uh, the, uh, we enjoy the inflow of the foreign investments, we will uh, also have uh, the capital, uh, financial capitals as well as the advanced technology. Also, we will uh, the, uh, further strengthen our uh, the human resources and and the development. These are the, our future aspirations. Today, the uh, through our deliberation at the World Economic Forum this year, that the, we are, I want to assure that there is great avenues, opportunities for uh, in Myanmar for the foreign investment. If these are the foundations are joined by the uh, the technologies and advantages you can bring in, this uh, will bring about benefits to the people, as you uh, Excellency mentioned earlier. Mr. President, this was the first uh, large-scale international meeting here of uh, business leaders, um, young leaders, uh, NGO leaders, thinkers. Um, you got a lot of advice and um, many ideas were born. Um, what was your personal reaction? What, what as, as the president, having very much engaged in the deliberations of this meeting, what do you take out of this meeting? But the first point, uh, and the, we, our country used to be an isolated uh, country for the last 20 years. 
and through the holding off of the, such uh, the uh, uh, forums, uh, we can uh, the, uh, demonstrate that we are part of the global communities and also that we are getting back to our right place. This is as a very uh, the, uh, the, the light and factors. And also with the, uh, uh, this is a time we are trying to have uh, the, uh, this, uh, we are laying foundations for the economic, uh, the, uh, economic development. Now, the, the, through this uh, forum, so we have uh, the state leaders, also the, the, the economics at uh, the response, and also who have uh, the uh, chief assessors in the economics activities, also young leaders, as you mentioned earlier. And through this, uh, the economics forum, this would definitely contribute to our, the, bring about the, the ideas and also opinions. So this is uh, the really definitive, the very beneficial the conference for our country. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, President Aquino, in the luncheon today, you, you said you have the recipe for strong, sustained, inclusive growth. Um, can you describe, just for those who were not at the luncheon, the key elements of the recipe and how they may be applied also to a country like Myanmar? Well, um, may we start out with, um, we believe we possess a lot of natural advantages. No? We have uh, the right demograph uh, demographic uh, numbers, figures, and personalities. We have a splendid location. We're about four hours away from all the major areas in Asia. Um, and it's four hours in e either direction. Um, we had about, we, we had and we have abundant natural resources. We have a very educated uh, populace, um, although there are questions as to whether or not they're in the right fields. Now, having all of those advantages, the question that um, really bedeviled a lot of us was, why were we falling behind when we were not that far behind the other countries in the region? And I guess added to that mix is a, a population that, that um, really took back government and demanded of government good governance. So that is the last portion of the mix that in empowers, you have an, an empowered government supported by the people that in turn empowers the populace to ensure the stability of the future and the stability of the changes that are happening that will lead to increased prosperity <coughs> for our country. Mr. President, you, you just uh, emphasized the support of the people. How did you achieve the support? Because I think for a reform process, particularly if you ask for sacrifices, which any uh, reform process entails, uh, you have to have the support uh, of the people because the people have to know such short-term sacrifices are compensated by long-term uh, benefits. Well, we, um, not too long ago. I, let me give a specific example. I was a, I was a member of our Congress there were a group of students, of uh, 80 nursing students, who visited our Congress. And I asked them, as soon as you pass your courses, you finish the board exams, you, and you pass, how many of you will stay in the country? And of the 80 students that I was talking to, only two of them raised their hands. It seemed that um, so many of our countrymen were cynical in the, of the future, in particular, that they saw no hope in the country. And suddenly, by, I guess, 2010 was the turning point, in a sense. This was an opportunity. Uh, the term of my predecessor was ending. There was an opportunity, and we were promising a, 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 a 180 degree, 80 degree change in governance from that which was experienced. So um, um, I think a lot of people will know that I had no plans of running in 2010. Um, we decided in a period of something like 40 days. Um, our campaign was, in effect, the preparations for our campaign happened in a period of about three months where others were preparing for it for their entire lives. And so um, a lot of our propaganda material were sourced by the people. And everybody, in effect, was investing that here we will have, in effect, a different candidate, different from that which has been preferred by all of the political machineries, and who promises to really effect change. And this seems to be our chance. And fortunately, we believe that in the three years that we have been governing, um, and I think our countrymen have agreed in our recent midterm elections, they voted a significant majority of our allies into office that, that we are on the right track. Um, as a case in point, let me, let me give you just a few examples of what good governance has wrought. 
We have a Ministry of Public Works and Highways. Um, a lot of our countrymen would say this would be one of the most corrupt agencies. And it, today, its reputation is that it doesn't bring in just projects on budget. It actually brings in most of its projects under budget and ahead of schedule. And even three years ago, not too many Filipinos would have believed that would have been possible. Look at the um, school building program we have. We're building, we, will, so we are supposed to finish 66,800 classrooms that we lacked when we started out by um, the end of this year. And the budget actually just supports 8,000 classrooms per year. In the six-year term, we'll just have 48,000. But through various schemes, including public-private partnerships, we will finish this lack. Whereas before, um, government was content to have um, in, in grade school three shifts for our, for our school children who were going to class in the early evening and would go home in the middle of the evening. So I guess um, the bottom line is the people were, in a sense, desperate for change. They saw the, at least a chance of a beginning of change. They, they threw their lot in with us, and I believe that they are, for the most part, satisfied with where we have, what we have achieved and where we are now. President Aquino, you, you are working in a um, parliamentary democracy, and you have a majority. You just won uh, nine out of uh, 12 seats again for the Senate. Um, how do you, in such a parliamentary democracy, when you have a transformation which is very intensive, um, requiring a lot of change, how do you integrate the opposition into this process and how do you avoid, I mean, you need a certain consensus, how do you avoid a too much um, uh, polarization of the camps? Well, we, a lot of the issues that we espouse and that we fight for, we, we believe are, are, are sound. Um, sound. Sound in terms of uh, the analysis of the problem and the proposed solutions. We, we invite uh, dialogues to, to thresh out all of the issues. We incorporate the ideas presented by other elements uh, that may not have been um, in full support of the measures that we would want to to, so to you perform. integrate the opposition yes. into uh, For, um, the preparation process of... Yes. One of the more controversial measures we, we passed is what we call responsible parenthood, which is a reproductive health bill. Uh, we are a staunchly Catholic country um, who does not, that, and that church does not sanction artificial means uh, of uh, family planning. So um, we tried to reach out to members of the church. We add amendments to the measure that would make certain provisions of it uh, more palatable to those who were initially totally opposed to it. And at the end of the day, we came up with the product wherein the majority were comfortable with. It got passed into law. So that, that has been always a process. And I believe I learned it from my, from my parents. The idea of consensus might be harder to achieve, but once achieved, provides the firm foundation for anything you'd want to achieve down the line. One, one question, um, you, you fought uh, corruption in your country and corruption is so much um, built into the genes of a society. What do you consider the, most, the single most important step to stamp out corruption in a country? Well, my, uh, my predecessor is answering several charges and is presently detained. Um, she has accused of a, the crime of plunder, and plunder is an unbailable offense in our country. Now, to ensure that that happens, one of my, well, the top four promises I had in, during the campaign when I ran, the fourth was judicial reform. We had um, a chief justice of the Supreme Court who felt that uh, they were above the law, or the law doesn't apply to them, and under our system, uh, such a justice uh, can be impeached. And, for the first time, we have impeached a uh, sitting Chief Justice of the Supreme Court who underwent the complete process, and we proved wherein he was deficient in following the laws which he was supposed to have uh, faithfully served. Yeah. So we believe we have sent a message to everybody else who has less in that, that there is the, the culture of impunity is over, and I keep emphasizing to the Cabinet, and especially our Secretary of Justice, that the success of our campaign has to be the ability to imprison those who have done wrong for our people. No, it, it cannot be that um, do what you want while you're in power and forever after 
be unaccountable for it. That, I think, is something that our people are really eager to see happen. When you look at uh, all your achievements, you still have to do with a lot of, uh, with a l large pocket of uh, poverty in your country. Yes. Uh, what will you do in the next years in order specifically to, to lift out those people of poverty? Well, you have to deal with the problem today, addressing the problems that were created in the past and preparing for the future. So how does that translate? Number one, um, a lot, there was a lot of onerous contracts that uh, our predecessor entered into that really made no economic sense, that were that's, that's really riddled with graph, and we, we canceled the contracts, and we, we will go into arbitration uh, for the contracts that were already executed, and we were prepared to go that difficult route instead of continuing that which was wrong. Now, in terms of the current situation, those of our countrymen, we have an estimated 4.4 million families living under the poverty line. And for them, we are investing with a program called, uh, well, it's called a conditional cash transfer. The primary condition is you keep your children in school. We, we hope that by the time they graduate the high school level, there will be a marketable skill already that will increase their prospects for advancing in terms of um, higher paying job opportunities. Now, the third is massive investment in education, uh, not just in putting up the schools, not just in getting more teachers, but actually even modif uh, having, we call it a roadmap no, for, for reform in our state universities and colleges, wherein they have to be more attuned to the needs of the communities that they serve, rather than be ivory towers that are, uh, are, have a disconnect with the rest of society. For, um, as, a, as an example, we had a professor in an university called the Beacon State University, and he was complaining that the government, well, that their institution was conducting innumerable and repetitive studies on rice and corn. The issue is the primary product for this university or the region where this university was, was coconut. So it was thought all of the studies that were repetitive were irrelevant to the needs of their community. So he studied coconut. And he's the guy who came up with a, a geotextile material called coco coir, which is a uh, used throughout the world presently, and the byproduct of the process of creating coco coir is a replacement for peat moss. So he is now uh, embarking on, and government will be funding, uh, processing sites that will transform the waste materials of coconut into uh, very valuable resources. And uh, that is the, the focus we have on addressing. And of course, health also is a very important portion. We have enrolled, we started out with 63% of the population enrolled in the National Health Insurance Program. We are now at the 86% level, and uh, the 14% that we're still targeting happens to be the informal sector sector that we're having dif a little difficulty in identifying and, and enrolling the program. President Tensen, uh, you just listened to your president colleague from the Philippines, and. The Philippines has the advantage to be ahead in uh, the reform process. Um, what is your reaction to what President Aquino said? Tamara, uh, President Aquino, this is my colleague in the ASEAN Free Walk. The, 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 in fact, uh, the yeah, the reform process for the last 30 years time of uh, the presidents and uh, the uh, president, the parents. Also, you are enjoying the certain degrees of the, the achievements. But this mind, uh, but in your, uh, the tenure uh, the, with your endeavors, we have noticed that uh, the, uh, the significant improvement, particularly in the uh, judiciary matters, as you uh, discussed earlier, there's such an improvement also this is uh, one of the areas we have to improve in our own, uh, in our countries, and also we take uh, the lesson from this, and also the dissemination of the educations in the uh, education sectors, and also this uh, we uh, I perceive this is a sharing of the experiences. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Tenson, President Aquino. I would end this first part by, again, um, appreciating the hospitality. Uh, I have here a symbolic, I um, uh, brought with me a symbolic Swiss 
um, Glock, you know, uh, um, in Switzerland, we, we hang them around the cows. Um, now, but they are also the sign of presidency. So, because you can create order. So, I would like as a symbolic gesture of um, moving from, Tianma, from um, uh, Myanmar to Philippines, I would like to ask President Tenzin to hand over this uh, clock uh, to President Aquino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>